Hi, I'm Adam Valentine with TwinStarMedia.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use GIMP to put two photos together using a layer mask. Now here's one of the reasons why I needed to use this technique for myself. I was on vacation last summer, and I took several photos that all had a similar issue. I would shoot a landscape, and either the land looked good, but the sky was washed out and overexposed, or the sky looked good, but the land was too dark. Now I'm sure if you're a skilled photographer and you have the right equipment, you can adjust your aperture or ISO settings or whatever you need to do to capture a great image. Well, I'm not a professional photographer, and while I was on vacation I didn't have the time or the inclination to mess with all of the settings on my camera to get that perfect shot. I could simply point my camera a little more toward the ground and the camera would adjust automatically so that the ground looked good and I could take another shot with the camera pointed a little more toward the sky and then the sky would look great. Then I could put the two images together when I got home using GIMP and layer masks. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. I've got GIMP opened up and I have my two images and this one is going to be my primary image. This one, the color and the foreground looks great, and you can see the rocks are not quite as dark. But in this one, the sky looks really nice. So ultimately, I'm going to put the sky from this image over into this image. But this is going to be my primary image, the one I'm going to start working with. So to open this up in GIMP, I can just left click and hold the left mouse button down and drag my picture into GIMP. And I can zoom in a little bit if I want to. And now I need to create a layer mask. But before I do that, I'm going to right click on this layer and add an alpha channel. That allows you to have a transparency in your image. So if I delete something, it will be transparent. Where if you didn't have an alpha channel and you delete something, it will just be black or white or whatever your background color is. So now that I've got an alpha channel on here, I'm also going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And you can do that by clicking on this little icon right here. So now we're going to take this top layer and we're going to convert it to black and white. So you can come over to colors and then go down to desaturate. And then you have these different options, lightness, luminosity, or an average of the two and you want to select the one that gives you the best contrast. So I think I'll just go with lightness and I'll click OK. And this is a nice black and white image but when I say black and white regarding a layer mask I mean only black and white, no shades of gray. So we're gonna come up to colors and then go to the curves tool And as you move these around, you'll see the blacks getting blacker. If you move this around, you see the whites getting whiter. And what I want to do is just make it so the sky is completely white, but I also want to keep as much of this outline as possible of the rocks and the trees. So you can just play with these settings a little bit. If I go too much, you see things, I start losing detail in the trees there. So I don't want to go too much. And I want to increase my blacks so there's no detail visible in the rocks. I'll zoom in so you can see. I don't want shades of gray in here. I want that to be completely black. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that looks now, so I can go ahead and click OK. But I also want to paint black over this. I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool. And I'm going to make a nice big brush. And I'm just going to remove any white spots here. So with the layer mask, anything that's white will show through and anything that's black will be removed. And 
if you remember, I want to remove this sky so I can replace it with the sky in this image. So I'm going to have to switch these. This top part will have to be black and this will have to be white. So to do that, we'll go to colors and then we'll come down to invert. Now we're going to go to our lower layer. We'll select that and then we'll right click and we'll come down to add layer mask. And then these options come up and we'll just leave it where it says white full opacity. We'll click add. Now when you're working on a layer mask, you can either work on the image itself or work on the layer mask. If you're on the image, it has this white border around it. So if you see a black border around the layer mask, then you're not working on it. You want to make sure that this has a black border on it and this one, well, it has a white border, but you can't really see it. So you want to make sure your layer mask is selected. Then you want to come back to this black and white image and we're going to cut this out and paste it into our layer mask. So you can go over to uh, edit and cut or you can use a keyboard shortcut control X which I normally prefer to use keyboard shortcuts. So with this layer selected I'm going to hit control X. That deletes it but it also copied it to the clipboard. Now I make sure I'm in my layer mask and I'll hit control V to paste. That pastes in as a floating layer. Now to make this part of the layer mask you have to hit this little anchor tool and now we've got our layer mask so as you can see we have now our foreground and just a transparency where the sky is supposed to be so now we need to bring in our image that has the sky so we'll just left click and hold and we'll drag it in and that opens up as another layer it put the layer on top so we can just select that layer and then use these arrow keys to arrow down so that layer is underneath. And it already looks pretty good just the way it is but if you wanted to you could use your move tool and move things around to get the sky how you want it. but honestly I was pretty happy with it the way it looked when I first pasted it in. So to make things look a little better you can come up to this layer again and make sure you're selecting your layer mask and then we can paint over and get rid of some of this stuff. Now if you remember anything you paint black will become a transparency and this layer behind it will show through. So I'll take my paintbrush with black selected and I can just paint right over this. And it basically just removes that so that the layer underneath shows through. And I could go ahead and get rid of this outline around the top of the rocks as well. And there's a little bit of a white line around some of these trees. I don't want to destroy the whole thing. If I erase too much, you can see the tree just kind of goes away. So I've got a soft brush with a, a fuzzy edge, but it's still a little too harsh. But I can take the opacity down on the paintbrush and then uh, it's kind of in between showing a little bit of the top layer and a little bit of the bottom layer at the same time. So it will make the appearance of the line around these things look a little less. Of course you can spend as much time as you want on this to try to make it as perfect as possible. But if we zoom out, I mean, the picture looks pretty good the way it is now. It's, you're not going to see any of that stuff unless you're really zoomed in. So you could play with it more and get it to be perfect, but I think it looks pretty good. If I was to use this 
picture in a video that I was making, it would be hard to tell that I pasted one image on top of another. Here's what the original image looked like. It was... the foreground looked nice, but the sky was kind of washed out. And we had a picture where the sky looked nice, but the foreground and the trees and rocks and all that was too dark. Now we've got this image where the ground looks great, the sky looks great, and everything looks nice. 